Welcome geometry students to 8.3 trigonometry. We're going to get into sine, cosine, and tangent today. Should be pretty exciting. Glad you could join us for this special episode. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Trigonometric ratios. What are these all about? Well, you've probably heard these at uh, some point, but you may not know what they are. It's sine, cosine, and tangent. What that just does for you is it describes a ratio between the sides of a triangle. So if we're looking here, here we have a triangle. And when we're talking about trigonometric ratios, it has to be a right triangle. Now you can always draw a right triangle out of a normal triangle or draw a right triangle within a triangle, but it has to be a right triangle. So this is a very important key piece right there in green, it has to be a right triangle, okay? Now let's just go ahead and introduce some of the sides within a right triangle. This is important. First off, you'll notice that this is already given. This is one of the most important pieces. This is your reference angle, okay? It could change depending on what you're looking for, what ratio you're looking for. So for example, um, if we have this as our reference angle given here, and we should probably label this, we'll call this A, B, C. So A is our reference angle because that's what's highlighted. All right, so if A is our reference angle, then we can label the side of the triangle. Now, one of the sides that is uh, obvious and never changes is the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always opposite the 90 degree angle. So that will never change. It's always gonna be the same. Now, depending on the reference angle, these two sides will change um, unlike the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse always stays the same. These two sides will change. So the first is called the opposite side. The opposite side is always opposite your reference angle. The reference angle never touches its opposite side. Now, the reference angle could change. For example, if I had B be my reference angle, then its opposite side would be over here. So you never have more than one reference angle per problem, so that's something to keep in mind. But I just wanted to reference or let you know that the reference angle can change. Okay, actually I'm gonna change the color here. I'm gonna keep that purple, and I want to change this to this orange color, just so you know it belongs to the uh, reference angle. Hypotenuse never changes. And the side next to the reference angle, the side touching the reference angle is always known as the adjacent side. Okay, so depending on where the adjacent, uh, the reference angle is, the adjacent side is going to change. So the opposite side is opposite the reference angle, adjacent side next to. Now, let's get into our ratios and how we remember them. So the first is sine. Sine is the ratio between our opposite side divided by our hypotenuse. Now, what does this tell us? This is kind of abstract unless you kind of break down what does it mean. Now, if we take, for example, a 30-60-90 triangle, let me draw one real quick. Okay, so if we have a 30, 60, 90, and this is our 30, and this is our reference angle right here, there's our 90, we could have this is our opposite side, and this is our hypotenuse. What do we know about the opposite side to the hypotenuse? Well, we know the opposite side is half of the hypotenuse. So if we were to take the ratio of the opposite side, one, we'll call it one for now, and the hypotenuse, well, if the opposite side is one, the hypotenuse is two, it's double in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, then it's one half. The sine, cosine, and tangent are all about describing different ratios. So for example, sine is how big the opposite side is compared to the hypotenuse. So for 30, 60, 90, it'd be one to two. It would be half the size. So that is a way to consider what do these ratios mean. It compares the different side lengths. So cosine, for example, what do we know about cosine? Well, cosine is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Okay, so we've used the adjacent side, we've used the hypotenuse, uh, and we use the opposite side. And the last one is tangent, which takes the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So there's a, a way to remember all three of these. So let me change colors here. So we have our sine, we have our cosine, and we have our tangent. A way to remember these is that our sine is so, S-O-H, 
our cosine is ka, C-A-H. And our T is toa, T-O-A. That just means soka toa. So soka toa is the, the phrase that a lot of uh, people reference in terms of sine, cosine, and tangent. And it's just a way to remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So each letter stands for the, refer the, the reference side, okay, the type of side that it uses to calculate the ratio, okay? So now that we kind of understand that these are comparing different side lengths, how big they are. So for example, 3690 opposite over hypotenuse is one to two, half the size. We can kind of expand a little further into example one. Now here we have example one. We're asked to find sine t, cosine t, and tangent of t. It's abbreviated sin, cos, and tan. Don't say sin though. Don't say cos and don't say tan. Please say tangent, cosine, and sine. That is the way to properly pronounce these. So we want sine of t, cosine of t, and tangent of t, and also sine of i, cosine of i, and tangent of i. Now, these are two separate problems. I know it looks like one, but this is a separate problem, and this is a separate problem. Please do these separately, because you can't do them at the same time. So how do we do this? The first thing is, well, let's, let me draw your attention to this. Don't use the 90 degree angle, okay? You don't want to use the 90 degree angle because which one's the opposite side of the 90 degree angle? Well, the opposite side is hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is already the hypotenuse, so there's a little bit of confusion there with using a 90 degree angle. Don't use it, okay? That's why it's not asked to find uh, sine of A, uh, cosine of A, or any of that. So what are our steps? Our steps are, step one, we want to uh, determine reference angle. Determine reference angle. Okay, in this case, we're gonna start with this guy right here, sine of t, cosine t. So this is gonna be our first reference angle, this one right here, this angle, okay? So that's our first step. Second step, label triangle sides. Okay, once we have our reference angle, now we can label the sides. The hypotenuse will all be the, always be the same no matter what the reference angle, okay? I would recommend, by the way, abbreviating to HYP. The opposite side is always gonna be the side not touching the angle. That's the opposite side right there, 15. And then our adjacent side is here, adjacent eight. The side touching, uh, the adjacent and the hypotenuse always form the angle. So if we were to connect these two, those form the angle right there. And the last step is use trig ratio. Trig is short for trigonometry or trigonometric, use trig ratio. And so in this case, we're gonna use each one of these ratios. So the sine of T, T is there, okay? So sine we know is opposite over hypotenuse. Well, what is our opposite side? Our opposite side is 15. What is our hypotenuse? It's 17. So we're done. That's all there is to it. The sine of t is 15 over 17. That's just describing the ratio. How much bigger? What is the comparison between the opposite side and the hypotenuse? So that's all there is to it, okay? So if we move on to cosine, we know that's adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side is eight. and the hypotenuse is still 17. So just from this, you can tell that the adjacent side is smaller than the sine. I know that's obvious, but um, it's eight to 17. That's the ratio between the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. Now we're on to tangent of t. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So our opposite side is 15, our adjacent side is eight, and that's it. We're done with all three of those ratios, okay? Opposite over adjacent, 15, over eight, and it's a fraction. They're always gonna be fractions. So now that we're done with that one, let's move on to I. I, first we need to, step one, determine reference angle, that's here. Okay, your sides are gonna change depending on the reference angle. So we need to make sure that um, we find the reference angle then label uh, correctly. Now the hypotenuse is gonna stay the same, okay, but I'm gonna erase it anyway. Hypotenuse will always stay the same. Our opposite side now changes. 
This is very important. I'm gonna say this again. Our opposite side and our adjacent side will change because the reference angle changed. So here's our opposite side is eight. Our adjacent side, sorry, adjacent side is now 15. So our sine is gonna be opposite over a hypotenuse. While our opposite side is now eight, our hypotenuse is uh, still 17, so it's eight over 17. Cosine, we know it's adjacent over hypotenuse. So we can go ahead and change that to 15 over 17. And lastly, our tangent is opposite over adjacent, so it's gonna be eight over 15, opposite over adjacent. Our opposite side is eight, our adjacent side is 15. So that is how you determine trigonometric ratios is through this three-step process right there, okay? Remember, don't use the 90 degree angle. Now, we'll go ahead and do one more example and we'll call it good, and then next time we'll talk about inverse trigonometry. So how do you apply um, trigonometry and what do you do? Why is it important uh, that we have trigonometry? You're gonna see that in video number two. This is part one. I'm gonna talk about this example too in part two, so stay tuned for that. Uh, hope you guys have been enjoying so far. See you soon.